The cell. All cells are enclosed by a cell membrane. And the function of the cell membrane is to hold the cell contents in place and it is also selectively permeable. This means that the cell membrane selects what can get into the cell and what can come out of the cell. The other thing about the cell membrane is that it is composed of two main biomolecules, proteins and phospholipids, which I hope you know about from the chapter on food. The next thing that's inside in a cell is a nucleus. And the nucleus is the control center of the cell. So there's the nucleus. It's the control center. And the reason it's called the control center is it because uh, it contains the genetic information. So let's have a closer look at a nucleus over here. So we have a nucleus. And inside in the nucleus we have chromosomes. That's our nucleus. And this is a chromosome. Now chromosomes are composed of DNA and protein. So here's our DNA. And then surrounding the DNA we've got protein. And the protein basically holds the DNA together in the chromosome. So DNA. Chromosomes are composed of DNA plus protein. The next thing is that a section of DNA is called a gene. So we'd have a gene here, maybe a gene here. There's genes all along the length of the DNA molecule. So here we have a gene. And genes are very important because they code for the production of protein. So therefore, inside in the nucleus we have the genetic information. And the nucleus is called the control center because it has the genetic information. The genes control what happens in the cell. The next part of the cell that we'll look at is called the mitochondrion. Plural is mitochondria. And the mitochondrion is called the powerhouse of the cell. And the reason it's called the powerhouse is because it is where respiration takes place. Now there aren't a whole pile of questions in the Leaving Cert Biology exam paper on the cell specifically and yet this chapter is so important because all of these parts of the cell will be dealt with in more detail in other chapters. The mitochondrion will be dealt with in the chapter on respiration because respiration occurs there and respiration is the way in which we break down our food to release the energy so therefore it's the powerhouse of the cell, energy. The next part of the cell that we will look at are the ribosomes. Now the ribosomes <coughs> are where proteins are made and they're scattered throughout the cell. These are the ribosomes. Protein synthesis occurs there and to synthesize something means to make it. Again we will be looking at what happens in the ribosomes in the chapter on protein synthesis. So how proteins, the code comes from the genes in the nucleus. It is sent to the ribosomes and then proteins are made. So protein synthesis. The next part of the cell is the cytoplasm or the cytosol. So if we look at the cytosol, the cytosol is the liquid part of the cell. It is the liquid only, whereas the cytoplasm is the liquid plus the organelles.
What are organelles? You could kind of think of them as the little organs of the cell. The mitochondrion is an organelle, the ribosomes are an organelle, the chloroplasts are organelles. So the cytosol is just the liquid, this jelly-like fluid inside in the cell. The cytoplasm is the liquid plus the organelles. So everything in between the membrane and the nucleus is considered the cytoplasm. Uh, in the cytosol, in the liquid part, a little bit of respiration takes place there as well. So the first part, glycolysis. Again, you'll deal with that in the chapter of respiration. Glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. Um, in a plant cell, there are a few extra parts that aren't in an animal cell. So we'll try to do these in green. So we have the chloroplast. And the chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place. And of course, photosynthesis occurs in a plant cell. So this is a chloroplast plant cell only. Photosynthesis occurs there and it contains the pigment chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is a green pigment so the chloroplast contains chlorophyll and it is where photosynthesis takes place. And that is in a plant cell only. Another part that is in a plant cell only is the vacuole. So the vacuole 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 and it is used for the storage of food and water in the plant. The last part that you'll find in the plant cell only is the cell wall. So the cell wall surrounds the entire cell outside of the membrane in the plant cell only. And the function of the cell wall is for structure and support. So here we have the cell wall. Structure and support. It is made of the biomolecule cellulose. Cellulose is a carbohydrate, it's a polysaccharide. Now the reason that plant cells have a cell wall and animal cells do not, the cell wall can be thought of as the skeleton of the plant. So animals have bones and they give the entire organism structure and support. The plant cell does not have bones and so instead around every single one of its cells it has this cell wall. It's made from cellulose, which is a very rigid material, and it gives structure and support. So in the plant cell, we have the chloroplast, we have the cell wall, and we have the vacuole. Everything else is in both the plant cell and the animal cell. Um, is there any other parts for the cell? No, that, they are the main parts of the cell that you need to look at for leaving cert biology. You need to look at the mitochondrion and the chloroplast in a little bit more detail. Um, you will deal with them in the chapters on photosynthesis and respiration. Also, there are some amazing animations online which will allow you to look at the inside of a cell in a 3D format and I'm going to post some links to those and I'm sure you'll find them quite useful. So that's it.